In this week's video, we have some nifty little upgrades we do on our overhead light for the nav station. We're going to modify the base and the lens a little bit to provide room for LED lighting to go in there. We're going to sync that LED lighting inside the base and hopefully it's going to turn out really wonderful. So stay tuned for that. You're going to want to see how this turns out. It's amazing. So once we are done doing all of our modifications with cutting all the grooves and slots and wire recesses, things like that, it was time to varnish the new teak light base, make it look real beautiful and pretty. So that's what we set out to do next. Once the varnish was done drying and we could put everything back together, we built up the light base, installed it in the overhead panel above the nav station, turned it on for the first time, and wow, are we amazed. This is really beautiful, better than we ever expected. We have a feeling we're going to be taking this panel up and down a few times and removing the light base, things like that. So we wanted to beef it up because it was just a little bit on the flimsy side. So we added some teak blocks to the back side. That way the screws won't pull out and they'll always have a good bite when we're installing them. With the teak panel down and the light disconnected, it was time to revise and upgrade the wiring that was back there. It needed a lot of attention. Some of it was temporarily installed by us, but the stuff that really needed attention was installed by somebody else. Oh, and wouldn't you know it, now that the warm weather is finally starting to come back around again, the air conditioner died. Perfect. This thing was brand new. We've only used it like two seasons. So, guess what? It won't turn on. And no, we checked. It's plugged in, so it's not operator error this time. We need a new one. One of the other things we wanted to do was we wanted to strip and sand back the shelf above the nav station there and try and add some new varnish to that. See if we can make it look beautiful again. So that's one of the other things we took care of. Sure enough, it's looking pretty good. Has a few stains on it we couldn't get out, but all in all, it's looking really nice. Our transformation of the nav station is really coming along nicely, so you might want to check this one out. A lot of interesting things take place. Hope you like it. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Okay, maybe that was a little over the top. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get our next video started. With you, I can hey, welcome back. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, comment down below. And please watch our video from the very beginning until the end. In case you missed it in last week's video, Baby had a little bit of prep work she had to do in between coats of varnish. Some old glorious sanding. Oh, wow. So she got right to work sanding that teak plywood, getting it ready for the next coat of varnish. Once the sanding was complete, it was time to shake the varnish and get ready to apply that next coat of beautiful varnish to the teak plywood. So Baby shook that varnish real well. Perfect. And I know everybody says we're getting air bubbles in there, so you might be right. That's what we did. We're learning. We'll change our process going forward, but anyways, she got that ready to go. Started laying down that next coat of varnish. That teak ply was really looking beautiful. Baby's getting the hang of this, putting down the varnish part real well. And of course, what video would be complete without me struggling, trying to figure out how to cut an angle on a piece of teak trim. So we had our angle finder. We set up our, our chop saw to cut that angle. We think we have it all figured out, but do we really? I wouldn't say we do. Oh, of course, no. getting the angle figured out is not the hard part now that we have the digital angle finder. It's figuring out how to cut it to the length with the angle on it is the hard part. We continue to struggle with that. Also included in last week's video is trimming of the teak panel. Once we get it installed, we had a little bit of gabbage in the center, and we had to trim some off on each corner to level everything out. The panel wasn't gapped. It was actually the teak lumber down below the little shelf there. We get it figured out and we find a way to make it a good fit and we move on forward. 
And lastly, one of the other interesting things in last week's video was we finally drilled the holes and actually mounted the teak light base for the nav station overhead light. We think we found a good location for it. It looks well centered. I think it's going to be a great addition to the nav station upgrade. Anyways, time will tell. Once we get the light on and turn it on for the first time, we'll see how everything looks. In case you missed last week's video, it's worth a go back and watch, and we hope you like it. Priscilla and I'm Rich. Together, Together we, we make DIY nautical, nautical dream. dream. No. All right, so where we at, honey? Oh, in the boat. we're still in the nav station <laughs> project. We're working on that, adding a few finishing touches to it, kind of just you know, a little bit extra quality we're adding mm -hmm. on to there before we finalize our job. Yeah, and then we uh, got to the point where we're putting the light base in and. Well, we decided we want to try a little, some little modifications to it. So um, we're doing a few different changes to the light base on this. And uh, we're going to try and get some of that little night glow mode going on in there. So, you know, we kind of like that, right? Yep. And so we were going to do the grand reveal. Oh, yeah. We hope, well, we hope we'll be able to get to that point. For end of this video. Yeah. At the end of this video, hopefully we can do a grand reveal and show you guys what that light looks like after we did the modifications to it. And some of the other things we want to do is the teak panel, the overhead one. We want to add a little bit of strength to the back of that. We want to make sure the screws don't strip out holding the light base in. Just some little quality touches that will make it last longer and remove, remove some of that flexibility of it. So it'll all uh, hopefully strengthen it overall in the end. So hopefully yep. that will work out good. And then we are updating our wiring and oh, our yeah. AC. Well, did not work. The wiring back there was. Uh, we're gonna do some quality improvements on the wiring, so we'll just leave it at that, and it'll just make it better overall, reduce any corrosion or moisture getting into the wiring in that area. So it'll tie it up nice. Oh yeah, and you said our uh, AC quit. Yeah, so we're gonna be hunting for a new AC that we had up in the uh, entryway there. Yeah, we'll put it in our Amazon lists. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, so we're going to pick up a new AC unit because it's starting to get warm and there's times where we like to have that AC run in, in the background just to help keep us cool and keep us from sweating while we're working. We don't like to sweat. So. Yep. And so we are removing old teak blocks. Oh yeah, those little side, those little teak cheek blocks. We're going to remove those and pull out the little bungs and so you get to see a little bit more of that action going on. And uh, yeah, look, we're going to clean up the look of that little area. Just trying to do all those little tiny finishing touches just to make it look really nice yep before we find out but anyways stay tuned guys we're gonna show you how we're gonna remove add a little bit here and there and uh yeah you know yeah so we'll see how far we get and we'll show you what we've done and uh hopefully you guys like it as much as we do so we'll see you in a little bit we're gonna get to work see ya stay tuned yep so we're taking our typical light base that we made here the teak one and we've modified it a little bit. We cut out the channel for the wires for the light fixture that mounts on here. We recessed that area just a little bit and that helps the wires not to put any kind of pressure on the bottom side so we get a good nice fit. And then what we did on the back side is on this one here, this is our second light base housing and you can see we did the relief for the wires there as well. Did the cut out in the center for the wires to feed through pre-drilled all of our holes for everything that mounts and on the back side you can see we cut a channel in here and that's where we're going to put our LED lighting in there so that's going to be pretty cool looking forward to seeing how this is going to turn out once it's all done we're going to go ahead and varnish this today and then we made another layer another base that goes on the bottom of that 
I'll show you what's going on with that. So take this, flip it, and it matches up like that. And if you look on the inside, we went ahead and did a relief in there as well. Put a channel in there, and that's for our LED. It's going to sit in here, it's going to sit in here sandwiched as well. We're going to use acrylic here, like a fiber optic, right? So with the LED sunk into here, it's going to transfer the light out through the ends. So we put a little radius on the edge here. This is going to mount on here like this. So like that. We'll polish the edges of the acrylic so once it's all done, it'll, nice, it'll be nice and glossy. That way we'll get as much light tra transfer as we can. So this is going to look cool. It's going to turn out pretty nice. So that will be the overall profile height of it once it's done. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use our favorite varnish. It's Sea Tall Marine Natural Teak. And we really dig the color this puts out on the teak. So we're going to be using that all throughout the boat interior. And okay, so we're going to use our foam brush. We'll start with the bottom side. The only reason why we're doing the bottom is just to seal it. Just don't want any moisture to get in there. And keep in mind, this is only our first coat. We'll be sanding in between the next coat and repeating the process. I'm just trying to get down a good heavy layer for our first layer. So we got the edges done pretty well. Now we're just going to do the top side. All right, that's about it. We'll let that soak in and we'll come back and see how it looks later. Probably put another coat on it again. The other thing we might do is we might go ahead and drill and locate the holes for that, mount it on the bottom side and do a test fit at the boat. That's probably more than likely what we'll do. That way we don't damage the next layer of varnish. All right, so we've been... ta <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the grand reveal. We've been working hard on this one. I don't know why, but for some reason this little uh, item here has been kicking my butt. Oh, kicking your A? <laughs> yeah, that too. So anyways, we want to do the uh, little minor grand reveal. It's not 100% complete, but we want to show you the concept. So. Here we go, ready? It's uh, back here, by the way, just in case you're wondering. So here we go, ready? Ta-da! Dang! <laughs> All right, so let's see what it looks like with the light off. All right, so this is like totally nighttime, like if we're just chilling, Night hanging out, anchored, just relaxing, watching a movie or whatever, this is what the, the view will look like. And then if we wanna do some uh, little bit of light, we have that. Have that, and we have that. That's full bright right there. So that's plenty of light if we need to be working here at the nav station or whatever. Just kind of whatever we're doing, whatever we do at the nav station. I'm not sure. We're probably going to be doing more uh, video editing than anything else. But uh, anyways, so that's it. I would like to polish this a little bit more. Maybe try to uh, see if we could brighten it up a little bit. But it's uh, pretty cool the way it is. So, and here it is, totally off. With that, it'll just be sitting like that if we want it, or we can have it like that. So, so what, do you, what do you think, baby? Yeah. So, <laughs> so oh, what, do you, you know. what do you think, baby? Good job, honey. Yeah. My idea. Your idea, of course, so. I've been telling you yep. about it. I'm but, like, dang, uh, dude, when are you gonna do that? So we got that action done, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we're really happy about that. So we're gonna try and um, make more of those. Just got to get the process a little bit faster. It still takes me a long time to make one of those lights, but you know, we make the base, we make the, we cut the acrylic and cut that to shape and do all the routering on it. And then the varnishing, of course, and all and that. I varnished the yep. teak wood. Right. 
and then we <laughs> purchased this light assembly here off the internet but we put it all together so anyways what do you guys think baby what do you think you like it i do like it honey yeah so that's what we got going on there it's nice it's my idea pretty cool so yeah that's what we got going on there so that's it fully out and that's the chilling mode right there. It'll probably be in that mode more often than anything else, but see, looks pretty nice, huh? Yeah, that's the kind of quality we get here at DIY Nautical Dream. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. So just to be on the safe side, we went ahead and added a couple little doublers on here. And these are actually spacers. We needed some spacers added up in these areas here with the three screws mount in because it was pulling it up too far. So those are about the, the amount of gap we need to provide there. And then these are the doublers we added for on the other side, the light fixture mounts up to it. And we didn't like the fact that the mount fixture screws were just going through the thin quarter inch plywood. So we added some teak on the back side and we epoxied that in and these are all epoxied in as well. So just to be on the safe side, because we don't know how often we're gonna be taking these panels up and down and we don't wanna be, you know, ripping out the threads and stuff on the holes where the light fixture goes. Cause to pull the panel, we have to always pull the light fixture, so. So I went ahead and pulled the tape off of what's going on back here. And uh, they got a couple of uh, terminals joined together there with the screw. And yeah, it works, but we're going to change that up a little bit. We're going to put some butt splices in there and we're going to tee off with two wires coming off this way, two leads coming off this way. And that's going to be for uh, future lighting expansion that we have ideas for. So we'll uh, clean this up a little bit also. This is something that we did and it was only temporary, but we're going to make it a little bit more permanent now. So, because we don't want to have to pull all this back apart just to get up in here again. So. So our air conditioner bit the dust. It's not working for some reason. It won't turn on anymore. And yes, we did check, it is plugged in. So we don't know what's going on there, but um, we gotta have AC. So we checked and our AC, our onboard AC actually works in the main salon. So we did, we pulled the grate off and we scrubbed the uh, metal vent cover here, the screen. Cleaned that up pretty good, then vacuumed it. And then we sprayed it with um, bleach bathroom cleanup spray seems like that did the trick but after we powered it up for the first time after doing that cleaning uh, lots of stuff came out and it did not smell good so uh, baby was not a fan of that and so it actually comes out of this vent right here seems like it's working real well and it's cooling the boat down so maybe this is what we'll just run from now on instead of the the big one up there I don't know the big one's cool because it, it really cools the boat off a lot faster, but this one seems to be working really nice once we get it down to temperature. We might just have to order another one of these and replace it for the main companionway entrance um, because we do like that. It really cools the boat off a lot faster than the, the in-boat unit, but we'll see how it goes. We're going to try this out today and then we'll make a decision. But this is definitely no good. Can't seem to get it to restart. Next up, we need to remove these little teak blocks located on the bulkhead. Remember how we get teak bungs out. <laughs> nice and clean. Comes out nice and easy. All we do is just pre-drill a really small hole for the screw to start in and then drive the screw in and it pulls the teak bung out at the same time. We have all four of them right there. Holes are nice and clean. No tear out, nothing like that. Same thing here. If you try to drill the bung out all the way with a larger drill bit, sometimes it gets messy and we'll ruin the hole. So we don't really care in this case because we're taking these brackets off and we're gonna go with something a little bit different on this mounting feature here. So for now, we're taking these off.
Yeah, you can tell that was added later. That was not added at the time the ship was built. It was added later. Alright, well, hopefully we can figure something out to cover these holes. Might just take like a tiny piece of teak and break it off in the hole oh, with some wow. epoxy on it. But for now we want to get ready to sand this, strip it down to bare wood again. So we're getting ready to put some new varnish on here. We stripped it down and we're going to re-varnish it now. The old varnish on here had some water stains and, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't up to date. I'm trying to make this look a little bit nicer. And so we're going to re-varnish it. So we'll add some new varnish and we'll see how this turns out. We stripped it down and we're going to build it back up with the new varnish that we've been using on all the other teak plywood and stuff. So we just want to try and make everything match. And once we put everything back together, all the panels and things that go in here, stripping and varnishing this area is going to be a little difficult without damaging any of the new pieces of wood. So that's what we're doing now, taking care of this. It had some water damage on it. We tried to sand it, get rid of it, the staining and stuff, but I don't want to go so deep in it that we end up taking a bunch of wood off. So we're not going to really see this. It's going to be a storage area up here. And we're just going to make it, try to make it look as nice as we can without going too deep into the woods. So. We will come back and once this is set up, we will re-sand it and add a few more coats on it before we're ready to go. But you can tell already, it's gonna look really nice. So far we have found anything we have used this varnish on, it has always turned out really nice. This is some good good varnish we like using it and we will continue to use it throughout the boat unless we come across something better this is what we're going to continue to use let's see how it turned out Yeah, I think that's going to turn out real nice. Obviously, we'll need to put a couple more coats on it, but it's going to look good. And you can see some of the circles on here where the water damage occurred. We just couldn't get it out. I stripped it down to bare wood, and it was just not... I think it's in there pretty deep. It wasn't coming out. And most of the time, you're not going to see it from any closer than about this, so you won't even notice it. We'll let that set up. We'll come back and do another coat on it later. Alright, so we're just letting that varnish cure. And then once that first layer is cured, we'll come back, scuff it up, and put another coat or two on it. Probably two more. And that'll be a total of three. Put three good heavy coats on there and we'll call that good. And then we can start putting everything back together again. We're continuing to make great progress in our transformation of this nav station on our sailboat here. It's really starting to look good. Baby and I are really happy with it. Hope you guys can tell the difference from where we started to where we're at now. Now with the overhead light addition, we like the light. We like the underglow feature that's on there. That's really nice as well. When all the lights are out and it's just the blue and the underglow on, it sets the mood. It's great for while you're at anchor, sitting back watching movies, or just hanging out. Really nice. We're continuing to move forward a little bit at a time on this project. Hopefully we'll be able to wrap up the nav station updates sooner instead of later. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos. We really appreciate it.
All right, so we're back, guys. Yep, we're uh, back. And uh, so, yeah, we went ahead and strengthened up the overhead panel with those little, we put a, some teak blocks in there, mm -hmm. some doublers on the back, epoxy them in. That's just going to make it, you know, more durable over the long run, especially if we have to run the screws in and out for the light housing, things like that. It just adds a little bit better touch to it. So, yeah, so um, we pretty much did what we're planning to do this week. Yep. And we had fun while we were doing it, too. We kind of goofed around and joked around and we played around. But we had fun while we are doing it. And that's what's important. We like to have fun while we're doing this. And we don't want to take things too serious. We're trying to enjoy the ride. We got a lot of those things done. You saw us take out the teak blocks. Those little teak cheek blocks. The bungs. There was a stain on the shelf in the nav station there. We stripped it down. We sanded it. And we re-varnished re it. But I don't know how to get those stains out of the wood. If anybody has any tips on how to do that. And we'd like to know how to get those out if we could. So I don't want to just sand away the wood. But if we could get stains out of the out of the wood. If anybody knows how to do that. Please let us know in the comments. That would be great. So otherwise, everything we set out to do, we got done. Except we did not have AC yet. So it's still on our Amazon list. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All kidding aside, we, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to stop to source one of those before the weather gets too warm and the prices will go up. Other than that, it's productive weekend. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. If you are not subscribed yet, Please subscribe, Please subscribe down, down below. below. And how do we subscribe exactly? What do we do? Click it like that button. And what's the sound? Clang, clang. Okay, so that's <laughs> what we're looking for. So you'll know if you subscribe, you'll hear that sound. So... And please watch our video from the very beginning up until the end. It Even helps. if you don't like it. <laughs> yeah, just let it play to your computer or cell phone. Car stereo, and, yep. satellite phone. Mute it or something. Yeah, any. <laughs> all right, guys. We really appreciate all the new subscribers. And we appreciate all of our longtime subscribers as well. Thanks for sticking with us. And we're just gradually trying to improve this channel, improve our project, and have a lot of fun while we're doing it. And we just thank you for all of your support. We appreciate it. So how many subscribers are we at, baby? Where are we at on this thing? We are on 975. Woo, so we're close. We need like 25 more, so. Yeah, so if you guys have friends there, share our video. Hey, if you guys have any friends like goofy people like us, like to screw around and have fun while we're doing it, <laughs> we're the channel for them. If you want somebody that's serious and not we quite as exciting serious. as we are, yeah, we're not the channel for you guys, so. But anyways, uh, we also need some watch hours, but yeah, we appreciate everybody that's helping us out along the way. And big thanks to everyone. Especially to David, our pain member. Yes, thank you, David, <laughs> for sticking around with us. And, uh, you know, he's happy, we're happy, so. All right, so stay tuned, guys. See you to our next video. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye. Okay, that's it, guys. Thank you. Dang, if I would have hit record. You did. Oh, okay, good. It's TGI action. Yeah, we're on the DJI. Better hit. Yeah, we got record going this time. Dang, if I only hit record. Man. I think you did. Wow. Okay. <laughs>Priscilla, <laughs> I already told you. Okay. One last chance. Yep. Okay. Are you ready to do your job or no? Right. Okay. All right, guys. We'll show you how things come along, and uh, we'll show you this update for this week's video. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't write also. No. Okay. Oh, no. We're recorded. That's right. We're good, then. We are good. Dang, I don't have my microphone. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you almost had me on that one. Dang, that would have been bad. Welcome back. Oops. <laughs> JK. Okay, yeah. that's it. Nope. <laughs> okay. 
anyways bye oh did you is it recording did we record it? Hang on a minute. <laughs> no, <make> it. <laughs>